Hello, my name is Santiago Garcia, and today I'll be presenting ECHO, Realistic and Repeatable Experimentation for Tiny Energy Harvesting Sensors. For today's agenda, I will go into some of the background required for the understanding of this paper, some of the design and methods that are introduced in the paper, a prototype created by the paper's authors, the results and testing of the prototype itself, and finally, some concluding remarks. So, first things first, what is energy harvesting? Energy harvesting is defined by Wikipedia as the process by which energy is derived from external sources. Some of these sources include solar power, thermal, wind, and kinetic energy, and salinity gradients, turning the difference in salt levels and water to electrical energy. Now, harvesters provide very small amounts of power, and in this case, we're talking about in the microwatts. So, why harvest energy? The answer, sensors are no longer limited primarily by battery. That means sensors can be deployed in harsh environments. These sensors can last for a longer amount of time without having to be moved or changed. Now, this is critical to collect valuable data without requiring, or if they do require it, very little maintenance. Well, this all sounds amazing, but what are some of the challenges with energy harvesting? Energy harvested is erratic and unpredictable, and there are many factors that can affect the amount of energy that can be harvested. Not just in the environment, but also what the device device's behavior is at runtime. And this leads to repeatable experimentation for the software being impractical with many of today's current methods. Now let's move on to some of the more background. Let's talk about energy source randomness. The nature of devices that run on harvested power means that programs have to be designed to be opportunistic. Designing an effective device requires effective use of power. There is an intrinsic relationship between what a device reaches via the supply voltage and its charge current. And this is described by an IV curve. Each harvested energy family will have a curve with a common char characteristic shape, but due to the load and environmental changes, there will be a slight modification to the, sh to the shape, and we can see this in the next slide. In this example, there are six curves, two from each type of energy harvesting. Each two pairs has different environmental changes. Solar in the full sun versus solar in the low sun. A Peltier generator, which produces energy via thermal differentials at different temperatures. And finally, an RF reader at different decibel milliwatts. As one can see, each quote unquote family of curbs maintains a similar shape while still being slightly affected by runtime conditions. Predicting how a device will perform in the wild requires harvester IV characteristics and program variation. Some common methods include replaying a harvested power trace from a device or using a programmable energy environment, for example, a light box. Note that energy harvested devices can vary in the amount of power that they receive. And while programmable energy environments are much more comprehensive compared to a simple power trace, they do have their downfalls. Let's start by looking at some of these current methods that we just talked about in the previous slide. The simplest approach would be to measure harvested power as the device executes, and then to replay that collected power. Replaying a power trace is simple and predictive, and this is mainly due to the simple hardware design that it takes to do this. For devices with a constant supply voltage, this is an easy task. However, varying the voltage causes power traces to either overestimate or underestimate energy that can be harvested. Devices that store energy in small batteries or capacitors end up exploring much more of the IV curve while harvesting energy. As you can see here in this diagram of a solar IV curve, there are various power curves that can be inferred from just this singular IV curve. That means that using a singular power curve really is a poor replacement for emulating 
the whole actual IV curve. Let's look at the next method for, for reproducing energy conditions that's a little bit more complicated than just a simple power replay. Programmable energy environments isolate an energy source and then create a repeatable environment to provide energy to a system. One of the main downsides to these devices is that they take a significant amount of time and exer expertise to craft. And additionally, these devices also tend to possess many points of failure. However, at the end of the day, this is still a much better solution compared to, your, to the approaches of just using a simple power replay. The solution, Echo. Echo is an emulator that can capture characteristics of an environment and then can recreate these in a repeatable way. ECHO is not focused on a specific energy harvesting technology and can support a wide range of energy sources while providing flexibility, accuracy, and consistency. Now, ECHO aimed to answer a couple questions. These questions include, how consistent and repeatable is ECHO? How accuracy in terms of behavior and physical con conditions can ECHO emulate energy environments? And lastly, is ECHO able to record and emulate multiple types of energy harvested environments effectively? Let's talk about how ECHO is designed. First, the system architecture is split into three parts, as seen here in the olive colored portions of the diagram. A surface manager, which stores IV surfaces, and these are a collection of tracked IV curves, and manages all of the high-level recording and emulation logic. An IV curve controller, which emulates IV curves at a singular port in time in a surface. And finally, an analog front end, which manages controllable current emulation and provides signal conditioning to take accurate current and voltage measurements. Let's go into some detail about how ECHO captures energy harvesting conditions. Electrical current is measured by the front end through measuring the voltage drop across a low tolerance sense resistor. Now this is very common in industry. Along with this current, the test device's supply voltage is also measured. These values are converted to digital signals via an ADC and passed to the surface manager for post-processing. Each IV pair represents a point on the IV curve. ECHO introduces a novel method to induce supply voltage volatility in order to best estimate the full IV curve. Continuing on, a smart load, which rapidly alters power consumption, leads to fluctuations in supply voltage. ECHO has designed an effect effective smart load using an 100 kilo ohm potentiometer and this is used to vary the current and explore these different parts of the IV curve. In addition to this, a curve fitting algorithm is used to estimate the shape of the curve based on these measurements. Now let's talk about how ECHO emulates the IV surfaces. Surfaces are emulated in three phases. IV curves are pre-processed for a surface by the surface manager. Curves are then communicated to the curve controller at the appropriate time. And finally, the IV curve is emulated by using the front end conditioning capabilities. Let's now move on to the implementation via the prototype that's been introduced in this paper. First, the surface manager is implemented using a 64-bit Windows 7 desktop. The front end is implemented using a custom printed PCB board, which is powered by a nine volt DC source and provides filtering and amplification for measurements. The IV curve controller uses an ATX Mega microcontroller when in emulation mode and a NI USB data acquisition device or DAC when in record mode. The total system cost is around $700. In addition to this, Software was also designed for recording, processing, and emulating energy environments, and this was written in a combination of Python, C, and C++. Now, the smart load previously mentioned is an implemented 
using a Arduino Uno microcontroller to control a digital potentiometer. Let's talk about some of the experimentation that was done with this prototype. So two methods were used to perform energy recording and emulation experiments. A light box with a light source with a solar panel underneath to harvest energy. And additionally, an RF reader in a Faraday cage with a programmable antenna. Note that the light box had 256 intensity settings and it was enclosed in a box to shield it from any kind of outside light source. Both of these boxes were used to test how echo performed versus traditional methods of replay and recording. Let's talk about the evaluation of echo. Echo was able to reproduce solar and RF IV services more consistently than each of the text, test boxes. Now, this is through emulating more than a million IV curves for the solar box and 64,000 RF curves for the RF box. Some of the load programs included static, semi-adaptive, and adaptive power programs for solar testing, and then a CRC check generator and a temperature sensor for the RF box. Let's talk about some of the results from the testing. Now, like I said before, ECHO was able to reproduce IV surfaces better than both the light box and the RF box. And this was deemed accurate enough for program to beha behavior to never change. Now, as a reminder, I stated at the beginning that program behavior could change if power was not consistent and it was very hard to get program behavior to remain consistent. Error was in influenced by the natural shape of the IV curve. Now, when you get past this knee of the curve, rapid current changes cause emulation error, specifically in that area of the curve. And this was the main error encountered by ECHO. The X-Mega microcontroller also limits the ability to emulate IV services because of the switching speed of only 135 hertz. Additionally, limitations in the size of the RAM cause switching speed to be lowered. Potential improvements point towards using a faster and larger type of RAM or a faster hardware bus instead of the current implemented software bus. Echo's prototype is primarily limited by hardware restrictions, which Notably, it can be overcome by using more expensive and available parts. Now that we've talked about emulation accuracy, let's talk about how ECHO was tested to reproduce program behavior. ECHO was used to record a randomly generated light box trace. It was used to emulate the recorded surface 15 times with three different programs. And the built light box was also additionally used with three different test programs. Note that the test programs used were the same for both Echo and the Lightbox. Now, the results of Echo show that Echo's emulation was far more consistent with a smaller standard deviation in flash writes compared to the IV curves generated by the Lightbox. In addition to this, Echo was also used to emulate RF sources. And the behavior of these programs were powered through an RF box. Now, the RF transmission power levels were varied over time, and Echo's emulation was compared to that of the RF boxes with two, the two loads previously mentioned. These are the CRC generation and the temperature tracking. For each of the test runs, Echo's emulation matched the ground truth behaviors of the RF harvester. In addition to this, ECHO had a smaller standard deviation versus the RF IV curve generator, just like the light box in the previous slide. To, to reiterate some of the questions that ECHO wanted to answer, how consistent slash repeatable is ECHO's IV curves? 
how accurately in terms of behavior and physical conditions can echo emulate energy environments. Is echo able to record and emulate multiple types of energy harvesting environments effectively? Through the results of the testing, the authors deemed that all of these questions were answered. Echo is consistent and repeatable with its IV curve generation. Behavior of programs was not changed with each of the emulations of the IV curves. And Echo is able to record and emulate multiple types of energy harvesting environments. And that is through solar and RF testing. Now let's talk about some of the future works that were proposed by Echo. Like previously mentioned, hardware is the current limitation, but this can be overcome by readily available parts, which can drastically improve both accuracy and measurement ability. While there are no constraints that prevent mobile deployment of Echo, the current prototype that the authors designed was in a large fashion to simplify testing, debugging, and evaluation. A smaller version of Echo that is portable is entirely reasonable for recording in remote field locations. Lastly, to evaluate other harvesting environments that can change more rapidly, the authors also plan to develop new programmable energy environments that complement the existing light boxes and RF boxes that they've created. That being said, I thank you for your time and I hope you learned something. Have a good day.